This is Selma Schimmel at ASCO in Chicago, the annual meeting. Our discussion continues now with Dr. Michael Atkins, Deputy Director of Georgetown Lombardi Comprehensive Cancer Center and University Medical Center. Welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Melanoma is a important topic, and you're going to join us now to talk about new options, name of your talk, new questions, how to select and sequence therapies for metastatic melanoma. And even the title of that needs explanation for our viewers. After uh, um, a, a pretty lengthy time of a lot of investigation that didn't lead us anywhere, over the last few years, there are two distinct approaches that are really starting to bear fruit in the treatment of patients with advanced melanoma. One is an approach that targets the immune system by blocking what are called immune checkpoint inhibitors. Um, uh, and um, that's allowing the immune system to actually be reactivated and eliminate tumor cells that it can recognize. And one drug that was um, presented at a plenary session at ASCO in 2010, and again in a separate trial at ASCO in 2011, um, is ipilimumab that has shown for the first time that you can improve overall survival in patients with advanced melanoma, in first in patients who had received prior therapy, and then last year in combination with decarbazine in patients who had been treatment naive. That drug was approved by the Food and Drug Administration in the spring of 2011. And um, at the same time, we've identified abnormalities in the molecular makeup of melanoma that drive certain subsets of melanomas to, to actually grow. And one that's uh, present in about 40 or 50 percent of melanoma tumors is something called a BRAF mutation. And there have been selective drugs that have been developed to block that mutation, that mutated protein, um, and the, its action in melanoma cells. And last year, the first of those drugs results with a, a phase three trial comparing it to conventional therapy showed dramatic results, leading to that drug, bemurafenib or zelbaraf as its trade name is, being approved by the FDA in the summer of 2011. So what that meant was that now there are two new drugs out there that have some overlap in the patient populations that they could be used in, and a lot of questions about which one do you use first, and in which patient population, how do you sequence them, and what are the subsequent drugs that are built upon these principles that are coming along and where do they fit in? So that was the theme of the session. I have a, a, a curious question. When melanoma is now tied to you know, immunotherapy and we talk about immune response and the immune system, differently than other cancers, why is that? So it was always difficult to answer those questions when we were using nonspecific immune therapies like interferon or interleukin-2. Why did they work in melanoma and kidney cancer but not in other tumors? And we never really knew the answer. My theory was that those tumors were more vascular, it was more easy for immune cells to get there and to recognize antigens and to actually do their job, that it wasn't something that was unique about the tumor cells themselves, but the environment in which they lived in. A lot of the new research into uh, tumor immunology has identified that many tumors have um, mutations in them, and every time there's some sort of mutation, it's an opportunity for a uh, new protein to be expressed that could be something that could be recognized as foreign by the um, host's immune system. And that happens a lot more commonly than we would have thought, and particularly in melanoma where there are a lot of 
what we call bystander or passenger mutations that happen. So most melanomas have something that's going to happen that's going to create something novel or foreign that's going to be recognized by the immune system. But there are then a lot of processes that the tumor does or the body does to regulate that immune reaction from happening. And we're now dissecting that out, and the development of these new drugs is a result of understanding those processes. The remnants of the chemotherapies, the cytotoxic agents that were used until we were able to move into the world of immunotherapy, where do you see the future of chemotherapy? I think that there's limited future for chemotherapy in patients with BRAF mutant melanomas because they're going to get BRAF inhibitors um, or immune therapy or more likely uh, both and BRAF is inhibitors are going to be the backbone for which other treatments are added on and those are unlikely to be chemotherapies. Um, however, in the as was discussed by Dr. Jeff Sossman at that same session, um, in the BRAF wild type tumors, which make up 40 to 60 percent of the melanoma population, is a mixed bag, and most of those we don't know what is actually driving those tumors. And even in the ones who we do know, we don't really have a good idea of how to target that mutation. And so there's still a role for either immune therapy, and if immune therapy doesn't work, and immune therapy, although it's an advance, works in a minority of patients in a major way, it leaves a lot of patients who might need some other type of therapy, and right now that is more likely to be chemotherapy than something else because we don't know what to give from a personalized, targeted standpoint. Talk to us just for a few minutes about what this has been like for you as a clinician to be living through such dynamic changes in um, clinical options for melanoma patients. I had the um, uh, pleasure of being the discussant for the all the high quality BRAF inhibitor um, studies that were presented today at the melanoma oral session. and. It really was a triumph to see in an oral session positive trial after positive trial being presented instead of somebody's work that had been going on for 10 years resulting in no difference. Despite all these advances, which are clearly wonderful, we haven't really solved the problem of metastatic melanoma. It still can be a tragedy for these patients. We may have postponed. Um, the inevitable, but we're not curing as many patients as we need to. And so I called upon my colleagues to not just rest on our laurels, but to continue to build upon these advances to try to work towards raising the bar even higher to the point where the majority of patients are getting long-term benefit off of treatment. Thank you, Dr. Michael Atkins, Deputy Director, Georgetown Lombardi Comprehensive Cancer Center and University Medical Center, Washington, District of Columbia. Thank you for sharing time talking to us, and I hope that in your lifetime you'll see us make that big advance forward <laughs> on behalf of your special interest in melanoma. Well, thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to have been here. <laughs>